sessions here. Finally, I get powerhouse. Will Hobbs sitting down. Yes. How's it going, dude? I'm good. How are you? I've been waiting for this. I've been waiting for this. I feel like we talked about doing this forever ago and I mean you know I mean you know things get busy and you've got schedules and all this stuff so as soon as I had that opening I was like all right now is the time gotta get Will Hobbs on um just as we hopped on and we're starting we were both that we were having bad mornings what's going on in your house what's happening oh my gosh so I, I have three kids I have a 15 year old a three-year-old and an 11 month old so my 15 year old hasn't got the concept of setting his alarm ah. at least depending on me to wake him up mm. so he started he started school at 805 he didn't get up to about 7 30 something so i just went in the room and just snatched all the cover off of him. get up <laughs> my three-year-old woke up at i want to say i got up at five to get ready to sneak out to go to the gym but he you up at five yeah he heard me like, Do you get up at five every day? Yeah. There's, there's, no, there's no sleep when you got kids. You're about to find out. Oh there's my God. So, okay, you get up at 5 a.m. Did you did you start doing that only when you had kids or you've done this forever? Where does this like rise and shine, get after uh, it? Oh, like, my, I feel like that's like the rock mentality. My grandfather woke us up early. Like we had chores to do before, before school started. So getting up early is, is easy. It's like, I got to like body alarm that just says, wake up. Oh my God. I feel like there's something special about, I mean, you were raised by your grandparents, yes. right? Yeah. Um, and I feel like that, like, that's like some real old school mentality at that point when you're skipping a generation and being raised by your grandparents, what other kind of things did they kind of instill in you? What was it like being raised by them? So my, my grandparents were from uh, from Mississippi and they moved out to California, I think like 1961, 62, something like that. And they, man, they just had us do old school stuff. Like just get up before the sun came up, do our chores. That's like being on a farm. Like, I feel like that's like being on a farm mentality. Well, my grandma, my grandma was raised on a farm. Okay. Uh, um, she was the second of seven kids and she had a twin brother so she was used to getting up early raising siblings so it was it, it wasn't it, it wasn't bad I mean I mean if I sure I made my son do it now he would <laughs> had no idea what you had to go through no I mean there, there were times that I got in trouble and I thought I got away with stuff and my grandpa had these cinder blocks in the corner of the backyard i would have to move it from one end to the other end just because just for being hard-headed <laughs> a little punishment but learn that work ethic yeah. um, are your grandparents still alive no they're not they, oh, they okay. Sorry, passed away that. in 07 09 so okay but they've been able to see you wrestle prior i would assume right no no they never got to see you wrestle never never, oh. never. i was always told like I got made fun of for liking wrestling, you know, cause all, cause where I grew up, you only like football, basketball, and baseball. Mm -hmm. and, you know, I was either you're gonna play some sports or you were gonna be hanging out on the corners in the streets. My grandma wasn't having that. So it was sports, but my grandparents loved wrestling. So we, I always watched it and went to shows with them. So who they were, were the ones like, that didn't make fun of me who were like their favorites what got them hooked into wrestling so ray stevens was their number one guy uh, the rock's grandfather high chief peter Maivia, his father rocky johnson they like roy shires pepper gomez so a lot of the bay area uh, wrestlers they like oh that's awesome what's like your first memory of watching wrestling with them or just like getting hooked by it to begin with that like gave you the bug of like, I'm going to pursue this. I think the first time was we were watching, we were watching a tape and it was like my, my grandfather religiously recorded wrestling on VHS tape. So it was the, the first match. I remember the four horsemen jumping Lex Luger. Like I remember them watching that VHS and then like my first show that I went to was at the Cow Palace. I remember right. 
Um, it was it was Shawn Michaels and Razor Ramon. So that they were going at it. <laughs> and every you, time every time they came, we we were there. Oh, that's the that's the best. It's so fun when, like thinking back to those like first early memories of like watching wrestling. Like I always think of like which obviously, you know, the the like before the show starts of like, don't try this at home. These are professionals, but like being with some of like my guy friends, everyone's just like tombstoning each other on like the front lawn. And like, we didn't know the difference. No, we, God, we, we all survived that. I, my, my sister used to like religiously put me in the sharpshooter and, you know, we oh, didn't yeah. have tables we could break at home. So we would set up the ironing board and she would pick <laughs> me up and slam me on it. And... I feel like your grandmother must have had no time for that. Did she get pissed when you would do that stuff? She did, but you know, my, my grandmother, she would take naps. And we would okay. miss the hay when she would take a nap. So she rarely, she would catch us. You had a window. You knew your window to cause oh, a little yeah. havoc. Yeah. <laughs> so you've had a really interesting story um, getting to where you're at now. I mean, being in wrestling for a decade, getting mm -hmm. to this point in AEW, I mean, kind of starting at the beginning, uh, you know, training out in the Bay Area. Like you said, you used to train, you trained with Booker T for a little bit. Too, I right? did, so I did a few shows for RO, ROW, okay. um, so did a few shows out there, and I did some shows down in LA with okay. uh, and Gangrel for uh, okay. well. so it was constant learning. What was that grind like for you of like just trying to get booked on shows and trying to be seen and trying to get in the right place at the right time? Because I mean, I can imagine and know for myself what that struggle can be like in general, but like, what was that like for you? It was hard. I mean, just, I, I would do my day job and then it would go to training and it was just hard, just, you know, driving five, six hours, maybe getting paid 20 bucks, maybe not getting paid, going to help out, set up rings and not knowing if you're gonna get on. And I, I probably got more no's than yes. And it's, my grandfather always told me, if it's something you love, just stick with it. And obviously it, it paid off, even though Hell yeah. it was some amount of years later, it, it paid off. Because I've had so many people tell me to stop doing it. And, you know, your, your day job is good. You're making good money where you're at. But What was your day job? So I was working at Facebook and Instagram. Oh, what were you so doing? I was there? in I was running four buildings out there. So I, my, yeah. my day would actually start like at between 4 and 5 a.m just making sure these buildings were running properly. I mean, that, I mean, that alone is busy enough, but you add in having, having a job like that, grinding away at wrestling, you've yeah. just listed off having three kids, one of them being 15. How yeah, did you- bigger than me. Like he's- <laughs> Really? Three size 16 shoe, still has a baby voice. And the doctor's like, yeah, he's probably gonna be anywhere from 6'10 to 7'1. He's just- what? off the charts and my younger son is off the charts too for a three-year-old you bring him in to be your imagine you having a heater that would be amazing yeah you're already it's, giant it's crazy so, <laughs> does he have any interest in wrestling does or like any other sports that kind of talk to him right now he's okay. trying out for a varsity basketball so he got pulled aside by the varsity coach was like hey you need to come mm -hmm. here monday so he's excited about that he likes to surf okay. so he's a water baby um my younger son, he wants to do everything. He, he wanted to wrestle like at seven this morning. So <laughs> but I think that's going to be my rest. Because I can imagine that's got to be pretty difficult when like life is staring you in the face and you've got jobs, you've got bills, you've got a baby, but you are still able to make time for everything. How the hell did you pull that off? I had great help. Family. Yeah. Family is the number one thing. Great support. Oh, so that's awesome. Them, none of this would be possible. <laughs> And Shout out to family coming yeah, through. Yeah, their mom. Their mom is a trooper. Like she's yeah. she's the foundation. So good. Keeps it That's, all together. And now here we are with like the payoff. And before we we get to that payoff, you know, start off, you know, talking about you working with with Booker T, but you had trained with Ezekiel Jackson. And mm -hmm. then was it through there that Cody Rhodes got eyes on you? So I actually started off training at APW, which is all pro wrestling. And here in the Bay Area and Cody did a show at the Cow Palace. Mm -hmm. And so that's where I first met Cody. And then I ran into Cody again at a couple more Bay Area shows. And he got pretty tight with the um, 
the owner and promoter of the company. And then out of nowhere, I get a, a text from QT Marshall. And I, 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 like, I looked at my phone like this, read it. I let it sit for two hours because I thought somebody was like, messing with me. Like, it's, like, I just got laid off from work and I thought somebody was messing with me. And I responded back and, you know, that, that was it. It's so crazy how things like that happen. And like, not to be like all hippy dippy about it, but like, I'm such a firm believer that like, when happens, like for you to be laid off and feel like, oh my God, I might not be working, panic setting in. And then to have a text like that come through, like that is like that divine intervention. I got laid off in March and I didn't go to APW until July. So it was that, and my daughter was born in May. So it was just like, man, well, wow. what am I going to do? But I got to do whatever to put food on the table and, you know, a couple of fast food, like fast food chains wouldn't even hire me. Like, they wouldn't even call me back. So I was <laughs> like, I was, I had some money saved up, so which, which helped out. But, you know, eventually you keep using your savings is going to run out. And that's what I don't want to happen. Of course. And like that feeling of having your back against the wall and what's going to happen. That's, I mean, I, I just feel like the universe works in ways like that, that like, obviously you're somebody that is like putting in time and you are doing all of the work to set yourself up for success that I feel like things meet you on the other side when it hits a fan like that. And for you to get that text. from yeah. and, and I know Mar time, Marcus like, Mack, he that, planted the seed to Cody. So yeah, that's where yeah. it all blossomed. So, so bef before you got to AEW, you did a stint of some. Yeah, trials I, I did a WWE? couple trials at the the PC. Um, mm -hmm. Probably my best tryout was with Big Swole and Eddie Kingston. We were all we were all together for this okay. tryout, and just something between us, like we we like cheered each other on and helped each other out. But obviously, from that tryout, I didn't nothing happened from it and then i did a few uh extra extra work for wwe when they came out to the bay area and you know i did a match against baron corbin which went really well but nothing happened so was that know, a it, was, it was right match, before was it was like a last minute thing started. like i was okay. walking from catering and uh one of the agents approached me i was like hey i need you to go put on your gear and i go put on my gear in Gorilla talking to Corbin, we probably maybe had like six, seven minutes to put it together and just boom. When you were at the performance center doing your tryout, I was reading something about, the, obviously they put you through the gauntlet mm -hmm. of getting in the ring and all the different training and going through the gym sessions and all that, but having promos being a big part of that, getting on the mic. I mean, you, it seemed like you had a pretty successful moment on the mic cutting a promo. I had told a there, real life right? story. Yeah, you know, I told a story about my brother. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that was supposed to be my, my partner in this thing. And unfortunately things happened and he didn't make it, but that, that's the story I told. And yeah, from what I was told, when you give a promo, you give that real feeling and, you know, you, you pull the people in, it's all about emotion. So that's what I did. Okay. So talking about your brother, mm -hmm. um, I mean, this is a story I know that you've talked about it before, and obviously it's such a, it's a pivotal and important moment for you throughout your life. Um, yeah. But just talk to us a little bit about what happened uh, with the passing of your brother. So my, my brother passed away. Um, and how can I put this? So my brother did what he had to do to, to pay the bills. So my grandparents passed away. You know, we're in their house, mortgage has to be paid. Um, and so he kind of, he didn't, but he, he, he led a life of crime and did things he shouldn't have done. And one day I was coming home, rushing to get in the house and a black car comes slowly creeping and eventually takes off down the street and starts firing. I got pushed out the way I got hit in the forearm and he got hit six times and, and passed away. So wow. it's, uh, it's been 10 years and it, it, I try not to, I get choked up just talking about it. Like I, I 
get this feeling every time I talk about it. Like it's just just one of those things that you'll never get over, even yeah. though I, I try and it's just it's something I think about daily. Mm-hmm. And it's <laughs> um yeah, so I don't know. <laughs> what was like a moment like that? for what was that moment like for you i mean to to be there and were you the only person with him when this happened uh, there were other people outside but as far as like my family yeah yeah um the way our house was it was it you come down you're coming down the street and it kind of turns into a, a quarter sack and mm-hmm. so that's there are other people outside but yeah. as far as like me and him it, it was just me and him so, I mean, if I didn't get shoved out the way, I, I probably would have got hit and yeah. not been. I mean, you still did get hit. I mean, luckily not yeah. fatally. What was that like to be shot in the forearm and like caught in the know. line of fire and like gang warfare like that? I, I didn't even know I got shot. So it, it was like, I felt like I was warm all over. And I was hot, but just my adrenaline was going so much because I saw my brother laying there. Like, I didn't even know until I looked down and I started panicking. Man, I I mean, what do you, I mean, I don't even know what to say to that. I couldn't imagine being in a situation like that and having to deal with something like that. And like you said, like 10 years ago, you're still young. I mean, what are you, 20 at the time? Yeah. When this happened and like. it's, it's, It's one of those things like, it almost seems like a movie, but it's not. Um, how does something like that not derail you? Um, how do you? How did you stay focused and not let that completely consume you? It's just because I I didn't want to be like one of my like a lot of my friends that grew up. So a lot of my friends got into gangs and drugs, and there's a handful of them that are in prison. And there's a handful that are dead, and so I I never like to be a follower. I always like to do what I wanted to do, whether, you know, I got made fun of or if it was the complete opposite, what everyone else was doing. So I, I knew from a young age I wanted to wrestle and just watching wrestling with my sister, my grandparents, and my brother, that was the uh, the thing that, you know, did derail me. Like I always wanted to do what I wanted to do. So it's... Was there ever a time that it seemed like maybe getting involved in some of that stuff might have been almost an easier way to go? Yeah, fast money. Like, who who doesn't want money? You know, sure. there's times that like I had to ask my older cousin for cousins for like hand me downs. You know, so it's you know I, I always figured something good would you know happen, but you know just. It's just one of those things you're going to do what you want to do or or follow everyone else. And I, and I didn't want to be like everyone else in my, in my neighborhood. Cause I, I didn't see any point of hanging out in front of a liquor store all day. You know, I'm like, what, what fun is that? You know? Yeah, that gets old quick. That's only fun for about two minutes and then you're over it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so you guys watched wrestling together because he did he also kind of have aspirations of getting into yeah, he wanted to be a manager. To be a ballet or manager yeah yeah he wanted to be a manager he, he 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 had a tongue on him like he could talk slick like yeah my grandpa always said he could you know sell a polar bear toenails if he wanted to <laughs> yeah he there's plenty of times that I've seen him like buy me ice cream from the ice cream truck and just somehow uh, he would buy one ice cream and I would leave with like four. <laughs> yeah, so. Who who would you guys kind of emulate? I feel like I'm sure when you guys were kids, you guys, did you guys ever like pretend you're like a tag team or work with him as like a manager in that capacity? Yeah, he, he, would, always, he would always, it's funny, he would always talk like a pimp. Like okay. I, he always said his guy was slick. So he would always talk like him. Like he dressed real nice all the time, always had gold on. So that's, that's, he was bringing someone from our environment, you know, that that's who we knew. So that's, I mean, that's that realness that ultimately is the thing that ends up connecting, right? When you just kind of, you do the larger than life version of who you really are and what you really know. And that's, that's the foundation of an amazing character. 
Um, how much pressure do you feel to succeed now that you're in the driver's seat, you're signed to AEW, you've put in all this work and looking at the past that you just spoke about and where you come from and you know, what some of those statistics have looked like in the past, how much pressure do you feel to be successful now that you're in that spot? I, don't, I, f I feel a lot of pressure, but it's, it's not like something for me to get nervous about. It's like, I'm more happy about it because there's times I go to East Palo Alto and, you know, cause I do have a few family members out there and I'll get recognized out there by some little kids. And, and that's the best thing. Like I've always said before, like, I want to put my city on my back. The only thing to do is, is to succeed. Like I have so many people depending on me, like failure isn't a, it's not an option. I feel like that's always like kind of the best way to go. I mean, some people crumble under that pressure and other people thrive under it. You're obviously a person that thrives in those situations. Yeah. Bring so, it all on. Like, I just think knocking down doors. everything that I've been through it, like it can't be any worse than that. Like it, it can't. You've you been know. through it. You've already been through it. It's only, you can only go up from here. Yeah. So what was that moment like when you got signed by AEW? Was it Tony that called you and offered you to the contract or was it QT Marshall? How did that go down? Oh, so it, I got offered a per appearance, like a, a tier zero. Okay. So I wrestled Darby Allen on the uh, Saturday night dynamite that we had and I'm stretching, you know, and Tony goes, he goes, Hey Willie, you know, I know you're going to knock it out the park tonight. He's like, go kill it. And I'm like, you know, I appreciate it. Thank you. I'm stretching, you know, I'm in the zone. And Tony takes a couple steps. Uh, he walks away from me. He takes a couple steps back and he goes like, Oh yeah, after tonight, I'm going to sign you. And, and this is before I go out. And I'm like, what? I'm talking about like <laughs> added a little pressure before I go out. No kidding. So, yeah, Can we so, sign it now? Let's sign it right now. <laughs> I was like, man. So I did my match with uh, Darby and Tony had his hand in that match, like agent in that match. So, which was really cool that he put that trust in me and put me in that position. And then um, I think it's the night I met you, September 5th at uh, yeah. the pay-per-view. Yeah. So, like, I was told that day I was going to be in it. It was a surprise and it was good from there. Then about a week later, I got offered a, a contract and I was. Cause I, so I, when I was like putting together this interview, that was something that I was thinking about was being at that pay-per-view and I don't get to go out to the AW shows as much, especially now that I'm about to birth a child. Um, I remember watching from there and I didn't know who you were at the time. And I was like, who's that guy? Like you stood out immensely. Thanks. Did you feel that that was really kind of a pivotal moment for your career kind of it, taking it off? Was. I, I couldn't have been the only person that thought that exact same thing, obviously. It, 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 was, it was, it was crazy. I think the, the universe works in mysterious ways because that was the day my brother and I got shot the day he passed away. So no one knew wow. that. Wow, that was the you anniversary know? of that. Yeah, no one knew that until later when, you know, I was sitting in the back and I'm just taking everything in and and Dustin comes, uh, Dustin Rose comes, you know, what's wrong? And I'm just telling him just how happy I am. Like, I, I can't believe it. You know, I was in this battle royal. I, I think I was like one of the last six in there. You know, it is it's crazy. Like the thing about where I was at the beginning of the year to where I am now is it was a crazy feeling. Like I haven't felt anything like that before. And I think that was the first time that AEW had fans there. So it was it was awesome. I mean, I I got an elimination that night and I'm going toe to toe with Lance Archer you know, before he hits me with that pounce. And that was, that was a great moment. It's like, we're looking at each other, well, almost like he's taller than me. So we're looking at each other like this. So yeah. it was, it's an awesome feeling. But do you believe in like having like a guardian angel kind of looking out for you and like having that like extra little bit of magic? I do. I do because I've, I've done some stuff like, like I had a, 
I had a my car spin out of control one time and I hit a telephone pole. Oh my gosh. I got out of that. No scratches, no scrapes. Like I always believe someone's looking out for me. Uh my grandma would always tell us that. Yeah. I mean, I, I always think back to um to when my grandmother was sick and we knew she only had, you know, a few days kind of left and I was doing a pay-per-view and I was doing a pay-per-view panel and uh my, no one messaged me before the show just to like not throw me off so I wouldn't be like sobbing on air uh, but my mom didn't call me until after and right John and I were driving on to the next town and right as my mom called and told me this Spanish song called Via Con Dios came, came on mm-hmm. and I hear that song all the time now which is crazy like I had not seen my cousin in a little while and from the same uh, maternal grandmother and as soon as I turn on her street this like random Spanish song starts playing again. I was like, man, that's got to be like my nanny yeah, giving me like yeah. some kind of a little sign. I believe in that. Yeah, it's, it's nuts. How was it working with Christian? Let's get into that before. I mean, no offense, Taz, I love Taz, but let's talk about Christian real quick. So I, Taz, I said that he's going to get, pissed. I won't, I won't. I, I won't. <laughs> so I told Christian a story about when my grandmother made me go get a switch. Now, you know what a switch is? Mm-mm. So it's where you go and pull a tree branch off, take all the limbs and everything off, and you get a little spanking with it. So, so you remember the glasses Christian used to wear that went over his head? Yeah. So those were like two hundred and something dollars, and I had three hundred dollars. So I bought those in a beanie <laughs> and came back home my grandma's like where's your stuff and I'm just like looking my brother looks at me and walks out the room my grandpa comes in the room and he knows I'm going to get in trouble so he goes out the front door and so I had these $300 glasses on I'm like look what I bought I start hitting a seven second pose and he was like go get that switch so I had to go get that there was no like return or exchange on those glasses so I owned to, the, they were yours yeah 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 the, the beating was worth it um <laughs> but i told him that story he had a kick out of it and just from you know a uh, few wrestlers that i know that have worked with him you know everyone has told me that he's amazing and the fact that i'm actually in the ring with them looking eye to eye with them i would have never thought this would have happened it's just crazy He's so amazing at what he does. And like for him to be at AEW and on this new version of his career, when you think he's not cleared to wrestle, he's not wrestled in seven years. You can't tell tell at all. It's nuts. I mean, even when we saw him in the Royal Rumble, I was like, damn, he's like shredded. He's not taken a bump in seven years. So he feels amazing. And now to have him be working with guys like you and working, you know, with the roster at AEW, I, I just feel like he's going to be very instrumental in oh, really yeah. helping to like shape some people and just, he's such a, a ring general. Yeah. Do you feel just, that being in the ring with him? Like what kind I of do. stuff do you learn while being in the ring with someone like him? So it's what, what I've learned from him is just the little, tussle we had this past Wednesday on Dynamite is just be smooth, take your time, you know? And I, he, from what I've always watched him, he always brought the best out of people. Yeah. He even said it himself. So it's no pressure, but I, I know, and I feel that he's, he's going to bring that out of me. And it's like, I, I literally sat down yesterday and just like, man, I'm doing what I always wanted to do when I'm working Christian. This is, this is crazy. Like I remember playing you on the video game. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And working with Taz, what's it like being a part of team Taz? How did that all kind of come together for you guys behind the scenes? Uh, Taz is great. Taz is, I've always watched Taz when he was in ECW and he always reminded me of a few people I knew on the block, just how his attitude and persona is. And then that's really him. Um, I got told one day, you know, I'm they're thinking about putting me with Team Taz, and, and it happened. So he's Taz. He likes to uh, he'll let you know when you're doing something wrong. Oh yeah. When you're doing something right, so yeah. which is also good. So 
I'm happy to we'll be working with him. Who are some of your like other people? I mean, obviously we know a team Taz, we see that on TV. Uh, who are some of the other people that you kind of hang out with and are like your pals, like behind the scenes? Um, my brothers, uh, Lee Johnson and the captain Sean D. Uh-huh. You, you always see us together. Like we get yeah. made fun of that. Oh, okay. We'll receive one. We see the other. So <laughs> those are my buddies that I hang out with. Um, guys that help me out a lot. FTR, Arn, Cody, Tully, Dustin. Um, there hasn't been Jim, Jim Ross. There hasn't been one person I've went up to that kind of like shunned me off a little bit. Like everyone is helpful. Yeah. Even like, that's awesome. the, like when I first, uh, when I saved Mox that night, when, when, uh, Ricky and Cage were going at them, like yeah. before that Mox pulled me aside and, you know, was like, I got some good stuff planned for you. You know, it's, it's cool to work with you. And I actually did some, um, extra work with him in WWE before. Oh, so, wow. What did you do there? So do you remember when he would have his, you know, little entourage come out with the gas mask? Oh, no. You got looped into that, too? Yeah. yeah. And we, we, well, were talking about hard, we were talking about how hard it is to breathe. And I'm just like, man. And it was cool that he remembered me. You know, he didn't remember my name. He was like, well, I know you from somewhere. And I told him that it, it clicked. So that was cool. He does have a good memory. There's like his memory is actually shocking. And there's times that I think he's not being observant. And I'm like, oh, you actually have totally assessed the entire room and everybody mm -hmm. in it. He's like, he, he just clocks it all and internalizes it. Yeah, it's my good mom for that. Is good people. So what do you want to do? What, what do you, how do you see the career of Will Hobbs going here in AEW or beyond or whatever you see the rest of the future looking like for you? If you I, could I, punch your own ticket. So well, something I did was, that I've done for the very, very first time was like made a little dream board. Ooh, okay. So I, I plan on being a multiple time champion there. You know, I'm, I, that, that's the goal. Like I plan on being around for a long time, you know, yeah. uh, that's, that's my ultimate goal. This is something I always wanted to do. Uh, you know, want to bring attention to, to my, my little two square mile city. You know, I want to help everyone out. And that, that's my thing, whatever I can do, if I can get on a, or when I get on a greater platform, it was, you know, to help other people out. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I mean, just looking at that all being kind of laid out in front of you, you got all this, it's all there. I mean, you have all the tools and all the resources to make exactly. this all happen. And now it's just time can be on your side to make that all happen. And as the world is opening back up and hopefully you guys can do some shows. I mean, could you imagine being able to do an AEW show there, like do something in like Northern California and like yeah, in the I, Bay Area? Like, that would be crazy. Like, I don't yeah. <laughs> what, else I, I, on, what else did you put on this vision board? I'm curious of like what all happened here. Um, I I wanna I wanna own a farm one day. Ooh, okay. You know, I currently have five baby chicks. You know. You home. have them now? Yeah. What is like what wait, okay, so where where in California are you now? You're you're close to where you grew up. Yeah, I'm about maybe 20 minutes from where I grew up. So I'm near, like, I'm in between right now, San Francisco and Oakland. Okay, and that's a place to just have some chickens running around. Yeah, well, they're, they're not actually outside yet, so they're, ba they're babies. So okay. they can't go outside until they're about six weeks. Okay. So they're in the garage, in a box with a heat lamp with food Ooh, and water. That's, like, kind of a dream of mine, too. I really would love to have, like, having fresh eggs in the house all the time. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, that's they, amazing it tastes much better than store-bought of course do your are your kids obsessed with them my son uh voices like they're afraid like he wanted them all right we got them he goes in every morning he checks on them he counts them you know he he tries to name them like every every day they have different names <laughs> uh, we haven't decided on specific names yet yeah. so okay he loves them Okay, so you've got chickens that are on your dream board, uh, having a farm. Yeah. What else? Um, I would like to be in a in a movie one day. Okay. You know that that would be awesome. Um, I want to just 
own my own island. Oh, okay. <laughs> I like where we're headed. Is that like possible? Headed. And it's just just be the best person I can be. Like that. That's my yeah. main thing. You know, take one day at a time. Yeah. Everything that I've seen, you know, nothing was guaranteed. So you just, were, I feel like you were one of the like first people almost when like when it was announced that John and I were having a baby and you were like on it. I mean, you've got three kids, you've been there, you've done that. What has like, what has that whole journey been like for you? It's rough at times, but it's, it's so worth it and rewarding. Like yeah. there's times that I get home, like I'll come straight from the airport and I'll come home with enough time just to put my bags in the house and then I got to go be dad. So it, yeah. it's just rewarding like just everything they do like I sit back and just observe just from the time they're crawling and they're walking or even if they're like teething or watching them play sports it's it's, it's all worth it it just reminds me of what I need to do mm -hmm. and it's, it's extra motivation for me and just the small, like the small things, like I'm always snapping pictures, like always. I'm all my phone is always out. I'm always creeping to take pictures. <laughs> they don't like to pose, but it, it's it, it's all worth it. Like just watching something you created and that you have to take care of, and you have to be the best person you have to be. It's all that just equals motivation. You seem very regimented. What do you do yeah. for fun? What are the things you do when you're like, oh my God, okay, I've got like a bit of time for myself or like, what are some of your vices? It seems like you are just like always going. I, working out, um, hanging out with my best friend. Uh, so my best friend is my uncle. So we're about a year apart because my mom is the oldest of 13 kids. Oh my gosh. So we grew up in the, in the same house together. So that's, that, that's my little brother um so we hang out um the project i have right now is trying to build a chicken coop <laughs> okay are so, you like youtubing this or you like know how to do that i'm youtubing it Smart. so I, I'm, it's not one that's like pre pre-made and you just assemble it like i'm trying to like put it together measure everything and you know and do that some real uh, man work yeah i'm trying i'm trying uh <laughs> playing basketball you know just watching TV, trying to catch up on my shows. I'm, I'm real simple. What are your shows? So I like watching some of my older shows. So I'm like re-watching the Waynes Brothers. I'm okay. Watching, watching Sanford and Son. We just uh, watched um, Major Pain the other night yes. and had not watched that in so long. Yes. We're like that, flipping through iTunes and we're like, oh my God, both of us kind of like lit up at Major Pain. We're like, let's put that on. It that made up. me want to get the gold tooth like him. <laughs> and I'm, I'm catching up on like queen of the south and you know just making sure like i i watch my wrestling like because i i do that when everyone is a like away or asleep because I'm, I'm already gone enough doing it yeah so i just when they're going away you know that's when i have my time and i'm always hitting up people like hey you know give me some advice on this and that um, what are you watching? Like what wrestling? Do you watch everything? Do you stick to AEW? What do you watch? No, I, I watch everything. I'm watching some uh, All Japan. Oh, right? wow. Okay. Yeah. So I'm, yeah. I'm, watching, I'm watching a lot of that right now. Who are some of the other people that you have eyes on right now or some people that you would love to work with? Um, I, I'm, I want to work with everyone, anyone. Like I would love to have a match with, uh, with Cody, Dustin, Jericho, um, Mox. I want to have a match with because I just know that he's scrappy and he, he, he's got some hood in him and we can <laughs> he does we, have a little bit we, we can just go at it you know yeah yeah that's awesome uh, okay so in your situation where you're becoming a multiple time champion at AEW uh, your situation who are you winning the championship off of good question who am I winning the championship off of I would love, I would, I know, I don't, I don't know anyone. Now you got to add that to the vision board. I do. I, I do. I, I I'm going to add that. 
I was how thinking. open are like your conversations um, with Tony when you when you guys are talking about your career and the things that you want to do? I mean, do you pitch a, a lot of these ideas to him, or like how does that kind of go for you? It, it's open. Like Tony is so cool. Like he he knows my son is playing basketball, and Tony is a basketball fanatic. Like he'll ask, you know, how's my son doing? You know, what well, what is he working on? You know, what's his field goal percentage like? It, it's open. Like I can text him and I'll get a response and, you know, it's just anything that I, ha- I feel I can throw at him. You know, he'll listen. And yeah. if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But there's, there is that open door where I feel comfortable enough to, to talk to him. Yeah. What well, on like the creative side of things, like, are there other things that you want to see your character doing or that you want to develop into? Do you have stuff like that in your mind? Um, since I'm already a monster, well, I like to say monster. <laughs> traps out. I see what you're working with. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm trying. So <laughs> I just, I would love to, to just tell my story, you know? So I, yeah. just, I would just love to just tell my story and whatever happens from it happens from it. Yeah. Maybe that's how you end up getting uh, that movie deal. Maybe it's one of those things that just kind of translates into film. Yeah, maybe, maybe. You know, I mean, who knows? Yeah. Well, time to keep adding to that vision board and we'll have to check back in a little bit later and see, uh, see what else has been added to it. What else is on there and see how those little chickens are doing with those fresh eggs at home. I know I'm, I'm waiting. That's the only reason why they're here is I want yeah. the egg. <laughs> Time I'm, to put him to work. I'm, I'm not going to clean up after room. That's going to be a chore for them. To... Well, good. Like you said, your grandparents did that to you. Now you get to do it to your kids. God instill that work ethic. I'm like such a big proponent as, as, as I'm getting ready to have my baby. I think about stuff like that a lot of like, I want my kids to know hard work. I want them to know having yeah, chores. You have, and like, to. you have to. Got to make them worth their salt a little bit, you know? You have to. Because I mean, there's so much technology now like there's times where i'll catch my son just like in the room for hours and i'm like hey no nah, let's go out and let's go do something yeah yeah i know that's really scary john and i were talking about that the other night that i'm like oh my gosh like that's something i think about living in las vegas with it being as hot as it is here and like i'm not from the desert neither is he so i'm like i don't know what kids do out here and i'm like that's a fear of mine of like oh my god what if our kid just like is obsessed with being on their phone or like obsessed with like they don't want to go outside and do anything like Hell no, get outside, get dirty, fall down, you know, heaven forbid, break a bone, but it's got to happen to us all at some point, yeah, right? Break the window, do something, go get in trouble. Oh. Yeah. I tell my son all the time, go knock on the neighbor's door and run. <laughs> yes. Bring yeah. back a little Nikki Nikki nine doors. Yeah, go, go. Yeah. Go do that. I got you. <laughs> go do that. Bring back the prank calls. That's always a good way to kill some time too, wow. though. Just call her ID now. I know. It's hard. You got like star six, seven that now. Yeah. <laughs> it's not as easy to get away with anymore. Yeah. <laughs> well, Will, thank you so much for coming on the show. I'm glad we finally got to hang out. Thank you. you on oral sessions. It's been a lot of fun. Um, I feel like, I mean, it goes without saying that obviously you're such an inspiration for everybody around you. And the more people get to hear your story and hear your kind of guy you are and the the cloth that you can cut from can't help but root for you want to see what other kind of things you're going to be doing with your future i appreciate that thank you